So welcome back everybody, this is John with Swing Fit. So have you ever wondered if it's okay to go through the fitting process, especially if you are thinking about overhauling your technique? Right? Maybe you're thinking about partnering up with a coach. Maybe you're not happy with the shot outcome and you want to switch it up and you feel that the Indian is what you need to fix. Well, if that sounds like you, then today is a great day because I felt what better way to respond to this question than to help you understand where I'm currently at with my own game because I'm definitely in the process of making some swing changes and I'm pretty adamant that if I'm going to get the most out of those technique changes, I got to change up my feel. So this is the best time of the year to do it and I'm going to see if I can find something that's better than what I'm currently gaming. So without further ado, let's jump in to find out exactly if we can beat the current sticks. So before we dive into today's topic, I first off want to welcome any new viewers to the channel. So if this happens to be your first time, or if you're just passing through and want to learn more about the club fitting process and really better understand what we are putting in our customers' bags and why, then I can assure you, you are in the right place and you're just a couple clicks away from gaining access to this information each and every single week. So do yourself a favor, consider hitting that subscribe button, smash that bell so this way you receive an alert when we drop our new content. And if you happen to have any questions or comments along the way, then do me a favor. Don't wait until the end of the video. Leave your comments and the remarks as it pops into your mind so this way we can try to get you the answers that you're searching for. So if you happen to watch any of our other videos, you know we always like to kick things off with a couple of baseline tracers, and tonight's not going to be any different. The only difference than that of our other videos that we do put out, I am going to actually do a side profile, and you're going to actually start to see, you know, myself actually hitting the shots, as well as the corresponding tracer along with that. And we often get asked is, why don't we ever show our customers in our videos? And the simple explanation is, it can become a distraction. And it's one of the very reasons why we will never have cameras in our live fitting sessions because the very minute I would actually put a camera in a bay, press record, our customers make this switch. I mean, they go from just showing us their stock vanilla swings to you know feeling like they have to perform on camera because who wants to have a bad swing that actually makes it to the rest of the world. So with that said, that's why we always like doing the post-fit analysis. But tonight, my swing, it's not off limits. We're gonna actually show you good shots, bad shots, and if I do make a bad shot, I'm gonna actually help you understand what are some of the things I'm working on in order to mitigate those bad shots. So let's take a look. Current gamers, these bad boys right here. It's a Strixon combo set, played all last season with them. The Strixon 585, seven through five, and then eight and down is the 785. So let's hit some baseline shots, okay guys? Um, so, Couple things I'm currently struggling with is the right side miss. Um, have been working on my technique. I get this tendency to push. So let's hit a couple shots. Good. I mean, literally, I mean, other than that first fat shot, almost jarred that one. Really good. We can end on that just a little heavy. 
So let's take a look at the numbers and just see how the baseline shots looked out. So all in all, that is my gamer. I went ahead and deleted the outliers and the first screen I wanna look at is the dispersion chart. So these are the six best shots and uh, just look how tight that is. I mean, it's not bad whatsoever. Furthest right was 31 feet, furthest left 22 feet. So all six of those shots is hitting that green in regulation. So whether I'm putting from the left or the right side, I still have the possibility of being able to drop a long one in, um, or if nothing else, get it nice and tight to tap it in for par. Um, so you know, this is what I would see last year out on the golf course, um, other than the fact of the shot shape. Last year, I, because I would really get that hard push from the right side, you know, from the trail side pushing into the lead side, I would actually play the ball a little bit more forward in my stance and try to hold that face open to hit that cut. Um, and then that's just because, you know, that was the only way I can get the ball up in the air because I'm really de-lofting that club because of that push. So I'm really trying to refine that technique this season. Try to stay more pressure back in the right side so that way I can pivot around and actually change my path direction, get that ball working a little right to left, close the face, not only to pick up a couple extra yards, but to also help get the ball up in the air. And when you take a look at the numbers, once again, these numbers are pretty damn good. I love them. I mean, average output 115. This is with the 585, hotter of the two faces. Um, launch uh, very close to where I want. I really like to see it stay in the 19s, but just see how tight it is. I had that one stinker at 15 there, but other than that, really stayed around 18, 19. I really would like it to be 19, 20, 19 to 21 would be an ideal launch for me. And backspin, I would like to see that in the mid five. So not too far off. Just had a couple of low stinkers. That's still that push to the lead side. Descent and apex, no, we've already talked about it. I gotta get it higher. Uh, so good range for me in apex, 95 to 105 for my swing speed. And descent angle, I like to see it at about 47 to 48. That's gonna give me a good you know, bit of stopping power. But average carry tonight, 167. So now let's get back to this heavily debated question, and that is, when is it appropriate to go through the fitting process, especially if you are thinking about making some swing changes? And just like in today's video, I am in the midst of making some swing changes of my own. And what I learned early on in my career is that when individuals focus solely on the technique, without making any gear changes, then they was more susceptible to actually revert back to their old swing habits. And the simple explanation behind this is, is that when they didn't make any changes to their current clubs while they was working on their technique, they just wasn't able to trigger the correct neurological response to get the most out of the technique changes because their feel never changed. So with that said, and based on that thought process, it's time for a change. Now the good news is, is that over the last several weeks, I've had an opportunity to hit every single one of these player distance irons that we're gonna take a look at tonight. Not only do I like the looks, but I also like the feel and the performance that I actually seen early on in my testing. And quite honestly, they're a lot more forgiving than one might think. So the three heads we're gonna be taking a look at is none other than the Mizuno 921 Tour Iron. It's a forged product, really, really good. And it's probably the smallest out of the three that we're gonna test this evening. And then we're also gonna take a look at the brand new Strixon Z X7 irons, as well as the Mura TC201s. Now, in order to complete this transformation, we definitely are gonna to have to make a shaft change. And I've already done some shaft testing as well. And the shaft we're gonna actually go with in tonight's test is the brand new Project X IO shaft. It stands for individually optimized. And one of the reasons why I like this shaft is not only is it a little lighter weight than that of my current rifles, it's checking in at about 20 grams lighter, but it actually also has a similar bend profile just softer because in order to switch things up I'm actually going to step down and flex I'm gonna actually go to an S plus to kind of you know see if I can't get the launch up in the air just a little bit more as well as just to kind of really you know trigger that neurological response I've been talking about in order to kind of change my tempo and my transition you know right now with that short sawed off half swing I'm really tugging on the handle a little too much and you know what going with a stiffer handle in the button, you know, is definitely something that I found I need, but 
And if I'm going to switch it up, I, I need to go a little softer. So that way, you know, I can actually still get that same feel, but just, you know what, not have the dependency of having to go so stout in the butt end. So there you have it. That is tonight's lineup. We had three heads, one shaft, and by the time we're done, hopefully we're going to find one winner that actually just stands above the rest. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at our very first combination. So first up is the JPX921 Tour Iron. Now this is definitely a player's look iron and I would definitely put it in the player's distance category because if you ever have a chance to hit this thing, this thing just flat out flies. Great ball speed numbers for a club that's got such a small footprint. So let's take a look. And that was on the screws right in the middle. I might even drain it. Let's go. Get it. Ha ha. I mean, three inches. All right. So not bad. Right in the middle. Let's hit a couple more shots. Oh. Nah, this is not gonna have enough tank. I mean, I'm just like, I'm putting it on a rope. Um, spins good. I mean, literally, this, I don't know. Uh, I haven't even hit the other clubs yet, and this is feeling damn good. Let's get one more good one in here. I mean, there's three in a row. That one just leaked it out a little bit. Um, not bad, a little higher up in the face, but uh, let's take a look at the numbers. So that was 10 to 11 shots with that combination and it actually wasn't a bad way to kickstart the evening. Um, so let's take a look at the numbers here because those last three, I mean, we almost dropped them into the cup and I'm really kind of curious to see what the numbers actually look like. So when we're taking a look here, uh, average output, uh, very similar to that of the current gamer. Um, and this is what's really, really cool about this, okay, is when you look at the current gamer, it's a 585 producing on average right around 115 uh, ball speed. Well, I'm getting the same output in a smaller head, a smaller form factor design. Um, so that really speaks volumes to just how forgiving this head is, even though it has a small footprint. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, launch, uh, that's actually, I'm, I'm still not pleased with the launch. I really want to get that launch up. You know, I want it to be 19 to 20 and maybe even touching the 21 uh, with my seven iron, but I do like the spin. I mean, spin actually did get better. I wanted to be right in the mid fives and um, I'm, I'm there, I'm checking that box. Um, but then take a look at apex and descent angle. It's almost kind of like the exact same story as we was with my current setup. And really kind of once again, you know, Understand this is is in the 585, you know, it has more mass low CG's lower than that of the tour iron for sure. Um, but I'm getting similar apexes and landing angles with, you know, that smaller head. So once again, you know, all things being equal, I really like how this head is performing. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, really good. And when you look at those numbers there for the carry distances, I mean, that is super, super tight. Um, I mean, you know, 162 was the shortest and 167 was the longest, so no hot jumpers. And I definitely had that issue in the Strixon, you know, 585. So definitely, you know, I had some hot jumpers every now and then. Um, so this is just going to tighten it up. And then when you look at that dispersion in the bottom there, I mean, that's really, really good. Um, 
wasn't quite able to get that right to left, but I think that's going to be, you know, as a direct result of the lie angle of the club. So I didn't make any bend adjustments to this, um, but you can just see from this picture and that strike point, which is tight, um, toe is down about four degrees. So if I bring that toe up probably two degrees, um, I'm going to actually probably get that ball to work a little back to the left. So, but once again, not a bad way to actually start the evening. So let's take a look at the second combination. ZX7, Project XIO. So at address, this one definitely I can tell it's a little larger. Not only is it a little thicker top line, just, you know, heel to toe, um, and definitely just the, the height of that toe is definitely a little bit larger than that of the 921. Um, it doesn't really put me off, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a little bigger. I'm not going to hit any more. Um, no different than like a regular customer fit. There's just something about this pairing that just doesn't feel right. Um, you know, so I'm not saying that the head's a dud, just saying that this shaft and this head is a no-go. Definitely, it was a lot better in the tour. So let's take a look at the numbers. Now, that was completely horrendous. I mean, I couldn't even hit a broadside of a barn with that combination. And it's not saying that there's anything wrong with the Srixon, you know, ZX7 heads. I mean, it's a phenomenal head, and we've put that head in a lot of our customers' hands so far this season. Um, but it's just not the right fit with this golf shaft. So for those that's out there that doesn't believe that the golf shaft matters, you know what, I'm going to just tell you right now, Take a look at these two images and tell me that the golf shaft doesn't matter, you know, and this is just a great point to drive home that how a golf shaft in one head may be the best fit, but how it just might be a complete waste of time or the wrong dance partner in another. So when you look at these two images, take a look at that strike point to the right. I mean, literally we're all over the face there. I mean, toe, high, low, even in a fractionally in a little bit in the heel there. And then when you compare that to the dispersion, you know, I mean, literally it's just that does coincide. And I see this day in and day out. So if you want evidence and whether or not if your shaft is the best fit for your clubs, right, all you need is some impact tape, maybe some Dr. Scholl's foot spray, spray your face, you know what, go to a driving range and hit a series of balls. Take a pen and pad and actually write down your strike pattern. And after every five or six shots, you know what? Wipe off the face, you know, spray it again and hit five or six more shots. If you're all over the face, you know what? May pay attention to where you're actually leaving it out on a golf course. Is it left? Is it right? And I promise you, if you're all over the face, you will be all over the golf course. Um, so guys, definitely this is proof positive that you know what that the golf shaft matters and i'm kind of disappointed that it didn't perform better but nonetheless you know what i'm here to actually find the best combination that's going to help me take my game to another level and i can just already know that this isn't the right fit um, now, if I did actually spend a little bit more time, I'm sure I can probably find another shaft, but I'm really eager to try the PXIO shaft. I really like the feel. It just wasn't good for the Strixon head. So with that said, last combination, let's pop the Mura TC201 in to see how it performs. So now we got the Mura TC201 to kind of cap out the very first shaft test. Um, so we're finishing it up with the Project X IO. Um, and there is a pretty big difference between this head and the other two heads we've already tested. And that is the overall head weight. Uh, Mura heads is definitely notoriously known to be the heaviest heads in the iron community. Um, and this thing's checking in about seven grams heavier than that of the other two. Um, those were checking in at 270 and 271 respectfully. Um, this one's checking in at a full 277 grams. At address, uh, 
Once again, uh, it's smaller top line than that of the ZX-7. Uh, similar width from heel to toe to that of the ZX-7 and height in the toe area. Um, once again, the, probably the 921 Tour is the smallest of all three, um, but uh, let's see with how this thing feels. I can already tell you just based on feel, 921 Tour won this matchup with the Project Nexio. So let's take a look. Now this last series of shots really didn't disappoint. It felt really damn good. Um, and it actually produced the hottest ball speeds that we've seen all evening. And it also created the highest launch. But the key thing is, is, you know, can it check all the other boxes? I mean, I, I already noticed that, you know, I wasn't happy with the one right, one left action going on. Um, so let's take a look at the compare tab here. And this one, we're gonna actually look at all three of them side by side. So when we look at them from top to bottom, uh, definitely, you know, the best average ball speed was that of the Mizuno Tour Iron. I mean, really, I mean, it was almost 115. Um, the TC201 had an average speed of about 114, but once again, I did see one in there at like 120, but once again, that could actually potentially be just a little bit of a closed face on that left wayward miss. Um, but take a look at that launch. I mean, no disputing. I mean, just like I suspected, the TC201 had the highest launch. Very similar spin to that of the Mizuno Tour, um, but uh, you know, and, and you can even look at the top left there, had the highest apex, and which is only gonna make it land a little bit, you know, steeper. And you know what, honestly, those are two check boxes that is important to me, but not at the decrement of a wider cast. And when you look at that top right box, I mean, there's no disputing. I mean, these are the best shots out of all three of them, right? So comparing apples to apples, the tightest dispersion was the 921 Tour. Um, and literally, I mean, that's the one I'm gonna go with. I mean, it's like night and day difference of, you know, kind of what that looks like. But you know what? Let's compare the 921 Tour to that of the current gamer just to see how it stacks up. Now, before I press record, I did actually take a look at the compare tab and I expected it to be a tight fight. I just didn't expect it to be this damn close. Um, so let's take a look. I mean, these two combinations are almost carbon copy identical twins. I mean, literally, I mean, you could put these things right on top of one another um, and it's comparing these six best shots versus six best shots. So it's apples to apples here. Um, ball speed, almost identical. Launch, identical. Backspin, a little edge up on a Mizuno Tour. And the carry distance tip to the favor of the Strixon 585. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna lose sleep over two yards because I know that there is a big difference between these two heads. You know, the 585 is definitely, you know what, a game improvement head, right? Where the, you know, Mizuno Tour is more of a player's distance. It's got that smaller footprint. Um, so for me to actually keep up with that head, I'm really blown away and I absolutely love the results. And when you look at that top right, that dispersion, I mean, once again, I mean, they are in the same proximity of one another. Um, so, you know, it's nothing to shake a stick at. And if I'm truly going to switch up my fields this year, I know I cannot go wrong by going with the Mizuno 921 Tour irons. Um, I'm even thinking about maybe just in the five iron, maybe five, six, 
doing a similar combo build. Put the, you know, Mizuno 921 forged irons in there. Just a little bigger head, just, you know, get a little hotter, you know, uh, spring off the face, you know, on those longer approach shots. Um, so that's what I'm really toying around with. Definitely going to do it in a five, but not quite sold on the six iron just yet. Um, but guys, I mean, that's it. I mean, you know, so we had three heads, one shaft, and a clear winner. So in closing, we truly hope you found value in this information we share with you today. And if nothing else, we at least now hope you have a little better understanding of the two key points that we did pass on. With the first one being is, is that how a golf shaft performs well in one head doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna perform equally as well in another. The golf shaft does matter and it is such an important aspect that we gotta find the right dance partner. And the second point is, is that when is it appropriate to go through the fitting process, especially if you are working on those technique changes. And once again, we're a firm believer that the golf club has a greater influence on how you swing and execute your delivery. And if you are in the midst of making some technique changes, that is the best time to upgrade and swap out your gear. So that way you can change your feels along with your technique. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, do me a favor, leave them in the remarks below and don't forget to take a look at one of these videos over here to the side, because I promise you there's probably a couple golden nuggets that's just waiting to be watched. So until next week, thanks for watching.